Hey, this is Trev, and welcome to my blog. Welcome to another exciting episode of Tips and Tricks. This time round, I'm going to talk about some edge shrinking pliers. So, you've got a panel that's got a curve in it, and it's had a bit of a whack, and this lip stretched. Now, normally, when you try and push this back, so you're pushing it by hand, then this sort of thing can happen. You've built a load of pressure on it, and all of a sudden, it kinks out. It looks absolutely horrific. Is there an easy way of sorting this situation out? Well, yes, there is. And I've devised a clever little way of sorting the problem out. And of course, all the best ideas are simple. And this is quite a simple way of sorting the problem out. While having a drink with some friends one day, well, they were enjoying the drink and I was studying the beer cap because I was thinking to myself how neat it was, how the edge had been created on the beer cap this nice sort of concertina edge and I realised that if it was flattened out of course it would just be a flat disc of metal well of course the diameter of this is far larger than this one here so I thought to myself if I can put that along the edge of a panel then it's going to reduce its length they just thought it was a bit of a weirdo now I realise you can buy a fork for creating tucks and I don't think it's particularly neat and I wanted to create a lot finer tucks like the one in the beer cap and I was having a route through my toolbox one day and I found a pair of pliers that I bought years ago because what I did is I built my son a playhouse in the garden when he was a little lad and I used real roofing tiles the real roofing tiles weren't to scale so I bought a pair of pliers to cut the tiles into four which gave it a better scale, but that's a different story. So anyway, I've got these two Bella tile cutters and they're too wide on the ends. So what I did is I just cut the end off. Um, this made them shorter as well, which gives you more leverage because I don't think this tool is quite up to the job really, but it kind of works, if you know what I'm saying, could do with some reinforcement on this top tooth. So what I've done is, I'll give you a good close-up in a minute, what I've done is I've reduced the width of the bottom jaws and it forms a nice pattern. Uh, what I've also done is I've filed the jaws round because to start with these just dug in really, probably created more stretch than anything else. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to force the material through the pliers and I wanted to do it in a way that it wouldn't stretch the material. It would just make the length shorter. When I say reduce the length of the material, what I mean is from one end to the other, reduce its length. I've got this thin strip of metal. This is approximately seven millimeters long. I'll put it through the pliers and we'll see how long it is afterwards. So by putting the metal through the pliers, I've now reduced the length from 70 millimetres down to 60 millimetres from end to end. I was discussing that you have a panel that's been involved in an accident or something, that's the, normally the way. Often you may have made a panel like this and the radius isn't quite tight enough, you want to tighten it up so you could use this method as well. What I find though normally is when something's been in a bit of a prang, of course it's had a prang and the lips stretched, it's always far easier to stretch something than it is to shrink it and the accidents always show this to be the case. Of course without the lip we could easily just bend this back into shape by hand, absolutely no problem. But once you've got a lip involved and you've got something that runs opposed to the basic shape of the panel, this is where all the strength's going to be in the lip and as I demonstrated in the intro it's virtually impossible to shrink this down by forcing it in by hand. So what you need to do is use a shrinker along this edge. Well, that's all very well and good if you've got a shrinker. Another situation as well is often, when this is attached to the vehicle still, so this could be part of the shell, there's no way, of course, you can get a shrinker in there. And this also may be inaccessible. And this is why I thought of this idea, because I keep on having these issues where I'm trying to sort something out like this, and what I wanted to do was create a tool that would have some kind of 
controlled effect rather than something that I don't know you could heat it up say and and try and put pressure in it of course it's just going to suddenly go and then you end up having a situation where you cause another issue where you have a, like a crease in the outside of the panel because once it goes it just goes in one spot and it's not very controlled and this is why I thought something that you could uh, graduate with pliers would be far nicer. I'd just like to say that this is quite a subtle procedure. We're not talking about moving vast volumes of metal here because if you had a stretched radius, so we'll, we'll say that this is our deformed damaged panel and we'll say that the radius has become stretched which is very common when the car's had a bit of an accident especially on these old cars with uh, huge wings and running boards and you know the old ash rain cars then quite often you get like a stretch in the radius and um, a, a fraction of a millimeter on the radius could mean say the difference of 10 millimeters up here because we've got this leverage effect going on so say the panel was a couple of foot long and say you I don't know say you looked at the end of the panel and you thought oh my goodness you know that's sort of 30 or 40 millimeters out you might think that's a long way whereas really when we come back down to the radius it may only be a sort of millimeter out down here so all you've got to do is just tighten up that radius slightly so I've marked out three points on this sheet of paper so you've got one point at the bottom two points at the top the top two are 10 millimeters apart and that's what we're going to do to this panel we're going to make this panel 10 millimeters to the to the right so basically we're going to shrink that down so that, that moves the panel 10 millimeters that way so I'll mark it out first to give us our original starting point so mark it out with a sharpie and then keeping this radius true so I'll take the panel off on that corner of that radius we'll move it to 10 millimeters which is quite a long way to have a panel that's 10 millimeters out would be quite a lot wouldn't it so we'll mark that off again and that's where that's what we want to end up having when we're finished so the main focus is going to be in this radius area here so what I want to do is I want to tighten this up hopefully you will be able to see something going on as I apply the pressure so apply the pressure this is very subtle like I could say it's not um, shifting huge amounts. What it's doing is it's just allowing that panel to be tightened up in that corner. So I've put, I just put one more. And we'll check it against the paper now see where we are oh dear <laughs> there you go that just goes to show how effective it is um, I'll mark off where we are now I'll do it in a different color pen so we can see the difference So the green line is what we've ended up with. We're looking at a difference of 17 millimeters from where we started. And the deformation on the panel is absolutely nothing to be seen on this outer edge. It hasn't deformed it in the slightest, but obviously it has on the inside. Now, what you could do if this was going to be butted up against another panel, of course, this could be this could be hidden in the joint and you could just seal over the top and you could say spot weld at either side and just leave it like this but if you wanted to finish it off nicely so that it was smooth again the issue you'll have when you try and hammer this flat is it will of course open back out again 
I'm toying with the idea of just doing that to see what the difference is because we have created a tuck and when you hammer a tuck you normally retain some of the shrinkage. The problem with this is, is we've only got the outer panel which isn't very strong. I'll explain a little bit more about tuck shrinking. Let's say I was making a repair section for something and it was quite a deep dish shape. So there's a lot of shape going on. So the first thing I do is put a nice bit of shape in with a blocking hammer like this. Lovely old blocking hammer, uh, nice polished faces. So what I would do is I would have something like a, uh, a hollowed out tree stump or a, a sand filled leather bag or something like this, which is a very, very firm piece of foam rubber matting, which is very effective actually. And there's two things that you can do. You can pound away at the metal in the center to form out the dish. Now, there's two things going on. You're stretching the material in the center, and what you do is you hammer off the edge. So you utilize the edge as an area that you can shrink. So you can actually reduce the length of the edge by staying away from the edge. Sounds obvious, I know, what I'm coming to is a tuck because when you create stretch, so you create a stretched area, so you've now expanded that steel because you want to dish it out. So where you've created the stretch, if it's close to an edge, you will create a tuck. I'll show you what I mean. So every blow with a hammer is created a tuck. So this, this has already started taking shape on. I know it looks utterly horrendous, but believe it or not, a lot of the original handmade Ferraris were made like this. Um, they were all made using hammer techniques, hammer forming, not hammer forming techniques, but hammering, hammering away uh, to create the shape and then changing over to beating files and things like that to try and smooth it all out. I'll, I'll get around to this in another one. I don't want to labour on this too much. I know it's very interesting stuff, but maybe I'll do this in an upcoming episode. I'll make a completely hand-beaten panel, so like a section, and show you what you can do and how, how smooth you can get things. So anyway, getting back to the tuck. So we've created stretch, and because we're quite close to the edge, we've created a tuck. Now when you hammer the tuck flat, of course a portion of it will straighten back out again, but a large portion of the tuck will actually shrink because the stretched area is holding pressure, it's pushing it out and it's holding it rigid. So when we hammer these tucks, and you notice the wavy line, a little bit like the bottle edge again, isn't it? So, bottle top edge I should say. So what I'll do is I'll hammer these tucks down now, I use something, I don't know, I mean really shouldn't use two metal things together. So let's hammer this tuck down now using one of my beautiful planishing hammers. So we want to get rid of that tuck. So I haven't really got the appropriate thing here, but basically tap, tap the tuck back out. going okay. So I've straightened it up, kind of, and what I've done is I've actually shrank that edge now, that edge will be shorter in diameter than it was before. When I say shrink, somebody always takes me to task on this, I know there is no such thing as shrinking metal. And I'll show you in obvious terms. So I've got a piece of, well I'll just say it's a piece of plasticine, this is non-setting sealer, like dum-dum or something like that. So. And this is just so obvious when you point it out, you know, a bit, duh, but 
it's quite hard to relate to um, metal. So when you're dealing with metal, it's quite hard to relate this to it because when you're handling the metal, it's not obvious exactly what's going on, but it's no different the metal from this. When we compress this, so I'll compress this and make it shorter. I keep compressing it, keep compressing it. And what I'm doing is I'm actually shrinking this. Now, obviously I'm not shrinking it into nothing. The volume of that mastic is going somewhere and what it's doing is it's taking on extra thickness. So it's getting thicker and it's getting shorter. So as it's getting shorter, it's getting thicker. And that's exactly what happens when you shrink metal. You're actually taking length out of the material by pushing it together, but you're making it thicker. And of course, when you're making it thinner, as you're making it as you're making it longer, so you're stretching it, so as it's being stretched, it of course is getting thinner. Extremely simple, really obvious when you look at a demonstration like this, but of course when you're dealing with steel, it's not as obvious. So what I've done there, is I've actually shrank those tucks down, could do with a little bit more hammering, a lot more work yet before that turns into any sort of looking panel, but that is the, the absolute fundamental basics of metal shaping when you start off putting that initial rough shape in I could turn this onto the English wheel just roll those bumps straight out of course didn't have an English wheel as I said they used to build the old Ferraris like this with um, you know planishing hammers and dollies and uh, you know all those kind of good things so I'll get right into that in another episode so unlike our hand beaten section if I just simply hammer these flat, there's no stretched area because this is just a nice formed sort of panel with no real strength to it really. There would be no, you know, there's no strength in straightening that out. Like I said earlier, if you didn't have that lip, I could just bend that by hand, no problem. But the lip's giving it the strength and the stretched area in the hand beaten panel is giving it its strength. So we can hammer on the tuck and shrink the tucks down. If we hammer these tucks out of this panel, what mostly will happen, most likely will happen, is that we'll just hammer out the creases and we'll be back where we started. So what we need to do is, if we want to get this nice and flat again afterwards, is we need to brace this. Very simple way of bracing it would be just to grip a piece of metal across. Okay, really straightforward, ever so straightforward, takes seconds to do. I've just simply gripped a piece of metal across. Of course, you could do this on the car and then you could literally put the dolly underneath and then hammer it flat again. And then this will stop it from spreading. It may spread slightly, but not too far. Okay, so the situation we're in now is I've probably reduced it by around about 12 millimeters. Now, of course, all I've got to do is keep planishing that lip. So I could planish it out a little bit more. So I'm gonna planish it out a little bit more because we have got some, still some sort of marks that the tools left in the surface. Now they won't go, they definitely won't go, but I can certainly improve upon them by giving it a bit of a, 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 a tap up now. So I'm gonna give this a little bit more light planishing from this side, metal to metal planishing, which of course will make this material thinner and then make it stretch. And then it'll just bring it around that extra couple of mil because we've slightly overcooked it still. Now, like I say, we were on a green line before and even though I braced it, I mean, I braced it and um, what it's done is it's kind of gone like that as I've straightened it out a little bit. So although I've braced it, it's still moved slightly. So I've kind of overdone it to start with and then the straightening out, finishing off processes, straight, straighten it back out again, you see. 
and um, you know you can modulate this you know you can just sort of think to yourself well I just need to take it just slightly further past you know where it needs to be like I said then you brace it punish it out and it's going to straighten out but you know you can sort of allow for this when you're you know using it or you could just tweak it a little bit more of course this all remains lovely and smooth so I'll punish this out and we'll see where we are Hey, nice hammer. So I checked this again against the graph, absolutely spot on, no problem at all. Got it bang in the right place now. All I need to do is just take some of these surface imperfections out. I'm not going to go mad because I don't want to file this thin, but I think I could just roll lock this over, make a few improvements. There we go, all finished off. Some tiny surface imperfections. But absolutely nothing a coat of primer wouldn't take out and of course this panel is absolutely true now it's all completely squared up as you can see and it fits perfectly Well, that worked and turned out really well. That lip ended up smack smooth. So in the last video, the headlamp video, here's the headlamps that all lovely and smooth and priming up already for the paint. Hopefully get the paint on next week and fitted to the van in double quick time. So in last week, the hammer competition, who won the hammer? The question was, what beverage machine is going to be in the side opening door of the van? And of course, coffee machine, espresso machine, something along those lines. Let's see who won. So Sheps, 73R, you are the winner of this fabulous Smack Smooth Hammer. I can suddenly see really well, it's because I've got my glasses on still. <laughs> so let's give the last hammer away. I haven't thought of a question. What an idiot. Uh, right. So the last hammer. And this really is the last hammer out of this uh, batch of hammers that I bought to give away. I initially bought them to sell and then I couldn't um, order any more. And um, I don't know what's going on with that company. Anyway. It just so happens that I've managed to place an order with them, which means I can sell a few now. So that's what I'm actually going to do. What can I think? So this is the last hammer, the hammer that you saw used in the video. So this is the last one that I'll be giving away. I'll, I'll continue to give hammers away, but I'll be able to sell a few as well. And hopefully that'll cover the cost of the ones that I keep giving away. So Sheps 73R, all you've got to do to claim your hammer is send me an email. There's a link in the video description with my email address on. Just let me know what your address is and I'll post this hammer off to you at my own expense, of course. And to win another one of these hammers, all you've got to do is answer the question, I've got a coffee machine in the van, what unique thing have I done to power this coffee machine? Off grid, as it were. And this is the final one of the hammers. This is all I've got left currently but i may have some more rocking up and i may have some more to sell next time round, and that will help fund the hammers that i keep giving away and uh, that's it i'm off i can't think of anything else to say and other than i'm really really appreciative of all the lovely emails and the comments people keep making and the donations of course all the donations go to help me buy equipment and I have been buying a few hand tools and bits and pieces that I'm going to use in future upcoming videos. So thank you very much once again. I'll see you next time round. Bye for now.
Thank you.